everybody bless you i hope you're having a great week god's hand is on us in a big way powerful way we had an incredible weekend uh, god's just pouring his spirit out saw lives changed people baptized people ministered to people healed and touched and um, i i just know that god is uh, on our side and i'm so glad for that um just want to come today with this little weekly challenge and just to uh, just take a couple minutes with you and challenge you to find strength in the Lord your God. You know, the one of the Old Testament stories that, that we love, uh, at least I do, is the life of David, the story of the life of David from when he's recognized as a young boy or as going to be the future king, the slaying of Goliath all through his life, his ups and downs. Um, David truly is a man after God's own heart. David, even though he was anointed, even though God's hand was on him, the promises of God seemed to be fleeting from him. And, and Saul came after him with a vengeance. And probably for over 10 years, up to 13 years, David ran and fled for his life from, this, from a king that was, that was paranoid, that didn't want David to take his throne. And so David ran from rock place to cave to desert oasis, running from Saul, this who wanted to kill him, destroy him. Uh, David was in some ways, uh, you know, just like you and I have a promise on his life and yet not being able to fulfill it every time he would try to make a move for it, something would come against it. I don't know if you ever felt that way, but I have. And, and David, you know, obviously was, he was a passionate guy. He wore his passion on his sleeve. We see that throughout his life. So, you know, it had to be hard on him. It had to be difficult as he trusted and believed in God. So there came a point in David's life when, when he decided that he was just to give up. And it says he crossed over and went to the land of the Philistines. He went over to the Philistines. He crossed over. And sometimes that's what we do in our life. We don't like the pressure of trying to continue to believe God, believe God, never see the breakthrough, never see the healing, never see the things we're waiting for. And so we have a tendency then to, uh, I don't know, cross over, to back off and say, you know what, it's not worth it. It's not worth all the effort and all these things. And I'm going to find some comfort, some ease. I'm going to try to get myself away from this. So so he, he joins over and literally joins ranks with the Philistines, who were the enemies of Israel. And a number of things happen, but eventually the Philistines go to war with, with um, Israel. And David is going to join and he's going to go fight with the Philistines against Israel. But the Philistine kings say, hey, listen, in the heat of battle, this guy's going to have a change of heart. And we're going to lose him. So send him home. Send his men home. We can't use them in this battle. So David, not only has he felt rejected, not only has he felt like God isn't fulfilling those promises, but now he's being rejected again by these kings. He's sent home and he goes back to the village, the little town that he founded called Ziglag, where his family was. And when he gets there, the town is destroyed. Everything he owns all their wives, all of his 600 men, their wives, their families, everything is gone. They're, they're, they're taken captive by the Amalekites. Uh, everything they own has been pillaged and stolen. And the men now have said, we've been following you, David, for several years, and we're just wore out. And the scripture says that the men literally were like picking up stones, thinking that they're just going to stone David. They're just going to kill David. They're in despair, they wept, they're bitter, they're, they're hurting. And it says in, um, in, in the text here, 1 Samuel 30, verse 6, David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each was bitter in spirit because of their sons and daughters being taken. Can you imagine? I mean, it was the worst of the worst. It was every man's nightmare had come down upon them. And what's David's response? What does David do? And this is what I want to encourage you with today. It says, but David, this is the thing about David. He had a heart after God. It says, David encouraged himself or found strength in the Lord, his God. 
David found strength in the Lord his God. So incredible. The Hebrew word for find strength or the word encourage, David encouraged himself, as it says in the King James, New King James, is, is, is a simple, the Hebrew word means, I, I, I want to make sure I get it right, um, to uh, grab hold tightly. That's it, to grab hold tightly. It says this, in the midst of all the pain, all the junk, all the distress, all the pressure, it says David grabbed a hold of Yahweh, the Lord his God. David grabbed a hold of him. David was reminded that the same God who took care of the giant was going to take care of his need and his problem. David had a history with God and he grabbed hold of him. And I want to encourage you, you know, we, we, we have ups and downs. Sometimes my prayer life, sometimes I just close my eyes and say, Jesus and the presence of God is overwhelming to me. I'm just lost in him. Other times I, I'm lost in me. Other times I'm caught up with all the stuff in my head and it's just I, I don't know I'm a mess sometimes and whether I'm up or down in or out I can always turn and grab a hold of my God my Yahweh this God who loves me who gave himself for me who loved me so much that he sent his son to the cross for me to 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 win me over to take away the sin so I can be in relationship with him and be brought into that place David grabbed a hold of Yahweh, his God. And God turned things around for him. In fact, they, he inquired of the Lord what we should do. God said, go after them. They went after them. When it was all said and done, I love the story. It says that David went into the camp of the Amalekites and he took back everything that was stolen. All their wives, all their children, nothing was harmed, all their things. And they, pill they actually pillaged the Amalekites and got back more than was taken from them. Grab a hold of God today. Know this, that he is faithful. He's a good friend. He's a good father. He loves you. You are his beloved. His eye is on you. The scripture says that you are the apple of his eye. He loves you. And in spite of maybe your circumstances, in spite of all the things that are a whirlwind around you, encourage yourself in the Lord. Grab a hold of Yahweh. Grab a hold of him. Hold him. His promises, his his, his nearness, just say, God, I know you're there with me and hold on to him. He'll turn things around. He'll take care of you. He's a God who answers prayer. He's a God who delivers. He's a God who restores. He is faithful to us and he'll be faithful to you. Bless you today. I hope you have a great week. Just be encouraged in him. Be encouraged him man. and don't give up. Don't give up. Hold on to our God for he will not fail you. Bless you. You have a, a great week, as I said, and um, let's, let's just keep pressing in. Um, our eyes are on the prize, for our God is faithful to us.